Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of a case of TB or tuberculosis of the small bowel. We are looking at two segments of small bowel and these have been longitudinally opened. And this is the mucosal surface where we can see the plicae circularis. And here is the serosal surface on the opposite side. What is striking here is that there are several very shallow ulcers that appear to be orientated transversely. In other words, they are perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the bowel. Let's take a closer look at these ulcers. Here we can see that there is an irregular and relatively shallow ulcer. The edges don't appear to be particularly heaped, rolled or thickened. This is the classical appearance of ulcerative tuberculosis of the small bowel, where we have ulcers that appear to be orientated transversely. In contrast, in typhoid infection of the gut, there are also ulcers, but they are usually longitudinally oriented, so parallel to the long axis of the bowel. Let's learn a little bit about TB of the bowel. The route of infection in the GI tract could be from the hematogenous route. It could also be swallowed if the sputum contains mycobacteria. And even if the liver is affected, biliary excretion where there is infected bile may also cause GI tuberculosis. Clinically, the patients may have fever, abdominal pain and loss of weight. And there may even be a tender fixed mass in the ileocecal region. There may be diarrhea, which is usually non-bloody, accompanied by malabsorption. Grossly, the ileocecal region is most commonly affected, and this is because there's lots of lymphoid tissue in the submucosa in this region. There is often thickening of the mucosa with hypertrophic mucosal changes, and later on there can be fibrosis, scarring, strictures, and also rarely fistula formation. So this example I have shown you of ulcerative TB. This is another example of hypertrophic TB where you can get lots of chronic inflammation, mucosal distortion, and this can actually give rise to an inflammatory mass that may even mimic malignancy. Where there is ulceration, the ulcers are often transverse, as we saw, and there may also be some miliary serosal nodules. And of course, the mesenteric lymph nodes can also be infected, giving rise to enlarged and necrotic lymph nodes, which can calcify later. The main differential diagnosis is malignancy, particularly if there is an inflammatory mass. And this can be very difficult to distinguish from TB radiologically alone. Hence, a biopsy and demonstration of acid fast bacilli is required. Another differential diagnosis is Crohn's disease, which can also give rise to ulceration strictures and is more likely to cause fistulae. You can also see this other example of a virtual specimen of TB causing an inflammatory mass. And if you scroll down this page, you will also be able to see the video. Here is the other example of TB involving the ileocecal region. And here we can see this inflammatory mass that you can well imagine can mimic malignancy on imaging. This is taken from our online virtual pathology resource, PathWeb, and you can play around with the labels of the gross interactive pathology specimens, as well as scroll down to view some images. And these are the little serosal nodules, which represent granulomas that I have mentioned earlier on. And if you scroll down, you will also see a similar talking pot showing intestinal TB. Hence, in summary, this is an example of ulcerative tuberculosis in the small bowel, and this gives rise to transverse ulcers in the small bowel mucosa. Thank you.